Welcome back to our day three of yeah. our live. I am Janet Luciano. And I am Maya Dari del Sol. <laughs> so welcome back. And like we always say, go get go get your tea, your coffee. I have my tea here today. Mm -hmm. yes, tea. I have <laughs> because my water. It's cold tonight. Mm -hmm. We are in Orlando. If you don't know it, we are in Orlando. And it's not that cold, but for us Floridians, when it's cold, we feel it's like colder, right? <laughs> We're so used to that hot, warm weather that when yes. it's cold, we feel it. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. how you can tell your true Floridian. So anyway, so, so bring your tea, get comfortable, and get ready to have a little chat with us as we continue our talk. Yes. And as we talk, if you have something that you want to add, Put it in comments. We will be checking on those comments. If you have any questions, something that comes to you and say, hmm, that's interesting. I would like to know more about it. Then just write us down there on the comments and we will, you know, be checking on those. And as as much as we can, right, we, we will be able to answer any of those and questions. I absolutely <laughs> address them. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So today we decided to talk about something that we really don't talk too much about. No. Which is the healer in us. Yes, the healer in us. We spoke yesterday about the seeker. Mm -hmm. And today we are going to be talking about the healer. About the healer. Yes. And what's interesting about the healer is that we are so used to giving, giving, giving as a healer. Mm-hmm that sometimes we're the one that fall into the healing crisis. Definitely. So I'm going to have it Maya, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have Maya talk about the importance, Maya, of, of staying balanced with that. Definitely. We are going to be talking today actually about the third systemic law of Bert Hellinger, which is the law of equilibrium. Mm -hmm. That's one of the principles of life. And sometimes we as healers, we forget that principle and we tend to give, give, give to others, but we just don't even take a look at ourselves. Where am I today or how am I feeling? But I give, 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 and at a certain point you collapse. We collapse as healers as well. And we have a beautiful intention of helping others and doing our service, but we, I should say that service should start, should start with you first with you as a healer. And we are going to be giving you an amplified vision of why it's important that you as a healer become first. Mm -hmm. And it is that when you heal, see, we are one system, one whole family. And we are connected to that family. And so if you have an issue and you feel disconnected or you feel tired or you feel stressed, the whole system is feeling the same as you are feeling. But if you change that as a healer, since, since you have been working yourself, cultivating yourself, if you heal that, then the whole system heals as well. That's the power of a healer. Absolutely. You don't need to do mo more for anybody else, mm -hmm. but for yourself first. Exactly. Eventually, you get more tools, and eventually you say, well, now I learn how to do this. Maybe I can teach others about healing all, or I can do healing for others. But we first need to um, align ourselves, center yourself, nourish yourself. That get is grounded. The way get, say, get grounded. grounded with yourself. Exactly. You know, like I said, do those rituals with yourself. Mm -hmm. So like that now when you come to the world with your service, you have been nourished from the inside out. Yes. And, and that's self-love self as well. Self-love. Yes, that's, that's self-love. The beginning of that. So critical that we haven't paid that much attention because in a sense we're not brought up. Mm -hmm. learning how to truly self love ourselves or how to truly really just do those, now, those some rituals we were taught mm -hmm. that we should think always of the other one and care help the others care about the others mm -hmm. but ourselves so we forget how to nourish and to take care of ourselves and that's that's what we will be talking about today 
and also about that law of equilibrium, the giving and receiving in, in balance. That and, I, and I feel guilty over that. Mm -hmm. And I feel guilty. We Sometimes we feel so guilty of being, feeling that we feel selfish if we kind of take care of ourselves first. Mm -hmm. But uh, you cannot give what you don't have in you first. And that's yes. why it's so important that we really keep that in balance. Definitely. I actually, when you go in an airplane, um, they mm -hmm. usually tell you if you feel, you know, if you need oxygen because we are in an emergency, they usually tell you, you attend yourself first, first and then you attend if you have children or if yeah. you have some somebody else, you have to do it for yourself. So if you are good, then you can help others. Absolutely. Yes. And we're here to talk about different tools, mm -hmm. the importance of having that balance and the different tools that you can use to to work on totally be the best person in service when it comes to healing exactly and if we talk about those fields that we should be taking care of we should be talking about body mm -hmm. right mind heart and spirit right so if you are in this healing field cultivating your energy through the through a Let's the different say, food that you and, eat. And yes, yeah, the different types of food that you eat, because that's going to help keep your spirit up, mm -hmm. depending on what you eat. That's something that many healers already are working on, and we don't need to talk a lot about that. Right. But keeping your body alkaline Absolutely. and taking, you know, lots of sun, because now we need that energy as well to cleanse us. And putting your feet on the ground and get grounded. Yes, get grounded. Do your walk. Do your walk exactly. And then also if we go to the mind, then keeping your thoughts, being aware of your daily thoughts or not daily, every moment thoughts. It's like monitor. You have to monitor. You have to monitor. In the your beginning, thoughts. it feels a little bit like a chore. But eventually, it totally becomes natural. Yes. And um, we like calling it just be very mindful, mm -hmm. very conscious mm -hmm. of how you speak to yourself. Yes. And I want to say something else about this, since we are talking about the healer. And it is that your thoughts are creating or manifest and manifesting a reality. And at this point in, in where we are in the humanity, that we are ascending to the fifth dimension, your thoughts are becoming very strong because we are closer to the consciousness. But since we have a lot of deep limiting beliefs, those are still affecting us. And if we don't know them, we are, we are still creating a reality based on those repetitive limiting beliefs and patterns exactly so those are so strong that we don't even we are not aware of them so when they come we follow in automatic in automatic we don't we don't even think about them but we are creating our reality based on those and since we are moving into this new uh, transcending state for the planet we are becoming um stronger manifestators and our thoughts they are very strong exactly so, so the direction mm -hmm. that your reality is taking depends only on those and you should you know work on being aware of your every moment thoughts because it's not only uh, that you can go and say i will be thinking about this but no just think about that now what did you think about anything that is around you or any activity that you is happening that you say, oh, I cannot do that, that's difficult, that bothers me, that is annoying. Those little simple thoughts are making your life different, but hurtful, you know? It's like, it becomes- Every, every thought is creating your reality. Exactly. Whether so, the thought is positive or mm -hmm. whether the thought is negative. Exactly. So that's why we stress so much to really be very mindful, very focused, Pay attention to how you're speaking to yourself. Pay attention to how you're feeling, you know, because that's also a wonderful God. And that's when we're going, that's the third 
field that we were talking about today is your heart. Mm -hmm. How are you emotionally feeling? Sometimes we, as healers, we feel vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to feel vulnerable because that's part of our humanity. And if we don't allow that and you repress those feelings and those emotions, then we may get sick. So we need to also allow, say, the circulation in the body. We need to allow that to come and go. But we need to also take some care at that moment and give some moment for, our, for ourselves to take care of our emotions and what we are going through. And when I feel like sometimes I feel like it's some 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 things are hard to do. Just and be compassionate. And be compassionate. compassionate. And even forgiving. Exactly. And learn how to surrender to what it is that we cannot, you know, fix everything. <laughs> and I would say that's key to learn to yes. surrender. Yes, to learn to surrender is the one of the best tips that I can give you because I usually do it when I feel vulnerable and that I cannot do certain things. Actually, I, I throw myself on the floor and I and I look up like this and say, I just surrender. I cannot control it. I cannot change it. That's what it is now. It can change maybe tomorrow, but not at this moment. And I surrender to it, and then the flow, the energy changes. Somehow that's magical. It changes, and then you can go back to kind of discern what's next for you. Mm -hmm. It's like I feel like the universe takes over. Yes. And then when you surrender, finally, now I can walk in and take over. Definitely. <laughs> and you feel it. The, your whole energy shifts. Yes, that's oh, how it is. Sure. Yes, and then, uh, of course, you have to cultivate your energy. Maybe you can practice some Tai Chi, some Qigong, some yoga. There are so many modalities that you can practice to cultivate your energy because you as a healer need to be feeling up, lifted all the time. And we need to take care of, for example, if we are in the winter time, practicing some Qigong, some Tai Chi, will keep those kidneys, you know, the, the kidneys where we storage our energy, will have the energy for us to continue moving. Mm -hmm. So there are certain practices that can help us stay aligned and strong. So those are some of, that's one little part that we wanted to talk today about what a healer should be taking, taking care of yourself, nourishing yourself, right? But there is another part that we want to talk about and is that balance between giving and receiving because that goes deeper that goes deeper to a state of understanding that sometimes no giving is more helpful than giving and also as you do give allow yourself to receive because i feel like sometimes we just give 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 mm -hmm. and then we feel bad like receiving and it's important to allow yourself to receive. Yeah, that's a good point. I wanna go back a little bit uh, to the point that I just mentioned, because that's when the guiltiness come, comes mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. When you cannot give, it's like there's something that says, you, you should not give more of what you have, or you should not take more of what you know you need. Because sometimes if you see that's, that's the actual balance, if I need something and I take more of that, then I'm creating that life decompensates. Mm -hmm. And if I give more, life also decompensates. It sometimes people confuse love with giving, giving, giving more. And love is not that. Mm -hmm. Love is giving and balance. When we learn how to give enough then life stays like this and not like this because then the balance goes off and that's not healthy for any of the two people that are interacting in that um, giving and receiving mm -hmm. uh, fact. So I wanted to kind of talk a little bit more about that and that's, um, that's the third law of the systemic laws. I'm talking about the systemic laws of Bert Hellinger. And we are talking here about family constellations, and that's one of the principles. Um, I want to share this case so you can understand a little bit more. One time I had a case of this man who came for um, to constellate because he had an issue. He couldn't forgive his ex-wife 
because he gave him he gave her so much she still after all of that she left she left him and he couldn't forget uh she couldn't forgive her because she thought he thought that she was um not grateful that she she didn't have gratitude for what he did for her even felt probably that she was a little selfish well that's where i'm going to mm -hmm. in constellations and i'm going to be talking here about the systemic work this woman wasn't asking for more but he was giving extras so he was buying her things he would pay for her school he wanted to give her everything he thought she needed but maybe she needed all of that maybe it was too much he it was, was too much was it was an excess much. that's where we are going to it was an excess of giving and energetically just listen to this energetically you start feeling that oh my god that's a lot how am i going to pay back for this and you find when especially when it's a relationship between you know wife and husband you kind of sort that out it doesn't have to be with gifts but it can be with other things right acting or helping or doing something that can compensate mm -hmm. but in this situation this woman didn't have the money to give back and she was feeling overwhelmed and at a certain point before she finished school she left and it was because energetically when someone is giving us too much and we can no give back then we feel that debt and it feels uncomfortable and sometimes it kind of bothers you and at the point you don't want more and it kind of instead of attracting it creates the opposite effect it creates separation that is extremely interesting yes wow. it is it Very is interesting so that's that was the point that he was like this when he, when i told him this he was like oh. so he understood that he was putting a burden on her so that means that energetically mm -hmm. he over was too excess overwhelmed her yes and she couldn't it was too much for to her to handle it was a burden at yeah, that it was point a burden. so that's why she chose to to leave to leave yes okay. yes so see giving 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 too much or in excess is not healthy for any of the two so that's the point finding the balance of giving and receiving Find, finding that middle point of because when you love someone and people tend that's why i say people tend to confuse that oh but i gave her so much so he was thinking that he was loving her so much he probably, but he, he didn't see his part i'm going to talk about his part and he probably just expected that that's what he needed to do no he was expecting her to stay with him Oh, wow. so see mm -hmm. there was an expectation and what is behind the expectation that's what we need to see see that's why we need to uh, travel deeper into our issues because he was he was he was expecting her not to leave and that's why he was doing all of this because behind all of that he had some emotional gaps and his was related to his mother because um i think his mother had left or died when he was too young so he was kind of like i don't want mom you to leave i don't want mom to leave again so he was trying to keep mom at home but it wasn't mom it was his wife right but he couldn't uh, realize the difference but he was trying to have someone so he wouldn't have to go again through abandonment that was the case of this man so that and was the underlying issue yes. that was happening in him yes exactly exactly so see everything has a behind the scenes that's <laughs> that sometimes so fascinating <laughs> oh my god as I, i'm listening <laughs> and i'm thinking oh my god yes and sometimes people don't get to see they these don't even realize things. that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's why we want to uh i wanted to or we wanted to bring that today the order of giving and receiving and the importance to know if i'm giving too much why am i giving too much if i'm not receiving from the other but i'm still giving too much i feel like the other person is in debt mm 
right? Mm -hmm. And why am I doing that? Or why am I taking too much? Sometimes taking a lot, like when you take in excess, you also have an issue that is an emotional gap. I need you to give me. I need, like the demanding people mm -hmm. usually have those emotional gaps and they are, I, they just take, they are takers. They don't know how to give because they need, and they have this big emptiness in that container of love that nothing can fulfill that container of love. So they always need and need more and I need more and I need more and it's like endless. And they, until they don't find that gap, then the, the order, conflict. yeah, there's conflict and order cannot happen then. You know, the balance cannot come in that relationship or in that person's life. Because it's not only happening about, you know, partnering, but it happens also with other people. You know, for example, you can find if you don't have a partner, maybe you find your best friend to give me or to recline or to stay with me. You know, it's like all of these things are creating, you know, imbalance. Mm -hmm. And that's why we wanted to talk about the order of giving and receiving and that you as a healer, you know, should be aware of, for example, if you are helping others to notice what's the pattern, what's happening there, and what's the behind the scenes, I just said, as I just said, what is behind the scenes, the scenes that this person is acting in this way, for example. And we usually, or what I, we do here, is that we transcend, and first, we need to identify the behind the scenes. And that we do it through constellations, through family constellations and systemic constellations. So as you see yourself, I'm just going to recap mm -hmm. a little bit. Yes. Good. So mm -hmm. as you see yourself that you're giving too much in excess, mm -hmm. then it's time to kind of like step back and look as to why. Because there's usually a gap that has been unfulfilled. Yes. And yes. through doing the therapy mm -hmm. of systemic and family consolation, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and find that gap. Yes. And understand where the unfulfillment is. Yes. And start healing. Exactly. And bring that equilibrium of the balance that is so important that we have in our lives. Exactly. So that pretty much, um, I, I love having you here today. <laughs> So just put everything in that order or all of all of my ideas today <laughs> so yes that that's how it works and just being aware of this is and going to give you of this that we we don't i know i'm sitting here listening to you maya and i have to realize i wasn't aware of something like that like when you said it i'm like oh my god and i started thinking of ways where i have been in excess uh -huh. so now i go i need to look back and see Yes. What is the gap that I'm missing that needs to be fulfilled? Beautiful. That's it. And another important thing is that see when people see from outside of the scene of what's happening between this interaction, tend to judge. Most people would say, oh, poor guy. You know, this guy was doing all of that for her. And look how she paid him back. And you're not seeing the the behind the scenes. And even the fact that he's not aware that he was doing it because he needed a fulfillment. No, he wasn't aware. It was unconscious. It was unconscious. That's mm -hmm. why we need to travel into our soul to find those issues, those wounds, those all of those limitations that we don't know we don't recognize actually it is that we don't recognize them and we behave in certain ways we don't know why we behave like that and we think that we are being you know good by doing that that instead of doing good we're doing the opposite we're doing we're harm. creating imbalance that's for that's ourselves that's and for others so that's one point that i wanted to bring here today usually the healer the healer first, you know, is the seeker, right? I have mm -hmm. an issue. I need to seek what it is. Mm -hmm. And then I heal it. And also after I heal it, then I become the healer because I, once I, I get that uh, awareness, then I want to tell others what's happening that others haven't been able to see because we all want to serve. We all want to be, we 
came to serve one way or another. You know, it doesn't really matter how is that you are going to be serving, but we are all at service. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the parts that I consider important to share today. So you could be, you could have some insights on how you are giving and how you're receiving and is, is there balance in there? Am I applying this order of love? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, am I applying this order to keep life in balance or how am I doing that part of giving and receiving? Right, to make sure we're not overwhelming the person and even overwhelming us. Yes. Through um, our excess of the giving and receiving. Yes. And just being aware of just really keeping that equilibrium. Keeping the equilibrium in your life. Yes. So mm -hmm. that's what we wanted to share today. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm still like, I'm still like, you know, in awe with that because I'm like, Stuff that we we're not even aware, we don't think about, we and automatically we don't even see it that way. We yes. are the first thing we do is judge. That's why we have to work on cultivating our thoughts. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, now our thoughts are stronger than before because we are elevating our consciousness to another level in whatever you think it is. But if you're not aware of those thoughts then you are creating a reality that is not so positive, let's put it this way. And, and, and that is affecting you know, the results of what you want to experience in your life. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we are going, like you said, to that fifth dimension, everything is a little bit like more passionate in a sense, like stronger. Yes, stronger, exactly, because mm -hmm. we are closer to our consciousness. So we are creating and we have a different power now, you know, it's like the power of 3D was like, I was still working with those fears and limitations and perspectives that were limiting and believing, but all of those limiting beliefs. But now that we are switching, mm -hmm. right? And it, it already changed for us, even though it doesn't seem like it. it, all of that changed and we have the possibility now to become manifestators of what we create. And that's why it's so essential to really pay attention because since we yes. are such a higher level now in our yes. consciousness, yes. we will create with the same power mm -hmm. what we don't want. Exactly, but like we don't want. <laughs> like we, what we want. Exactly. So that's why yes. it's so essential like to really pay attention to your thoughts and your self-taught and your thinking and how you react to different things. Yes. So to wrap up, <laughs> we have to be aware as healers because we are helpers. Here mm -hmm. we are helpers of life. Mm -hmm. We came to do a service. So we, at this point, we need to be aware of our thoughts, our emotions, what's behind the scenes, and behind the scenes also in your mind, mm -hmm. and cultivating your energy and cultivating your body. And those are the four pillars, right, that you need to be aware of in, in order for you to recreate a healthier and more functional life, especially that now that we are moving into this new change, transformation. Transformation already happened. So now the change is the one that is happening at this moment. And um, and you have a wonderful tool. Yes, and I have a wonderful that, tool in to which do you're that. We're going to provide a free webinar. Yes, on Saturday. Yes, let's January talk about 30th, that. Yes, let's talk about at 11 that. 11 a.m. Go ahead, give them a little more about that. Yes. So this coming Saturday, uh, the 30th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, I will be giving a free webinar on family constellations what they are, how they can help you, how you are connected to your family system, how that affects you, and the orders of love, how to create balance in your life through these principles of life. Mm -hmm. And that's completely free. So I'm going to leave the link here for you to oh, sign no, up. <laughs> and I hope I can get to see you on Saturday, I really feel like everybody, every healer, 
every therapist, every coach, and every mother, every parent, everybody needs should, it. <laughs> should know this. Absolutely. Actually, I was thinking that I don't know why they didn't teach us this in school. That should be one of the classes because once you know you get to full, um, transcend this part, then you can get to your goals easier. But if we don't know it, as I didn't know it, I actually got to know all of this when I was in my 40s. And tomorrow will be 50. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be celebrating Maya tomorrow. So we will Absolutely. be celebrating tomorrow my... Um, I'm, I will be stepping on the fifth happy floor. <laughs> Thank you so much. Attention. Congratulations. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes. Yeah, so I decided to start also teaching constellations since that, that was my intention. I said, after I become 50, I'm going to be teaching. And that's happening already. <laughs> she has manifested that in her life. I already manifested and it. <laughs> we will all have the joy of seeing her do that. Is this is an wonderful. online event? Yes. That's a great point. It's online. <laughs> Thank you, Lioness, Lioness. Yes, it is going to be online. And once you register, you will get the link uh, to meet. And, and that's that's how it is. It's very simple. Register and by, by email, you will be getting the link to get into the webinar. And yes, I'll, I hope you can make it. Thank you for asking. That was a great question. Just we need to clarify certain things. <laughs> um, and definitely invite people. You know, definitely invite your friends, your family. Yes, please, if you, you know. can share, we will appreciate this because that's our service. That's why we are here for, to share this information for you to know where am I that I haven't been able to fix so I cannot move on until, you know, because I need to fix something. And that's when the healer, you know, awakens within you and you start seeking. Like we spoke yesterday about the seeker. So if you weren't here yesterday, <laughs> you can um, check our, the, I'm going to link this to the last video, which is the seeker that we did yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's Absolutely. it. Simple. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Lioness. <laughs> I love that name. Yes, that 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 lioness is like powerful. Power, powerful. Yes. yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Beautiful. So thank you all for watching and for staying here present. We appreciate it so much. We decided that we will be here on Mondays. Um, Live moving yes. forward, moving forward. So be looking for us on Mondays yes. around the same time. Yes, seven okay. seven p.m. And we will be sharing more information like journey to consciousness. We want, since we are in that journey of ascension, mm -hmm. we want everybody to have this information. Uh, we are like most of the healers are in service at this moment, bringing all of this information out here because we need everybody to know it. It's time to change and you know if you change it inside it happens outside but we need to go very deep inside to be able to make that create that change <laughs> and we're here yes. to provide you with different tools that we have learned in our healing journey yes and yes. we definitely want to definitely share that with you definitely yes we have a lot of tools if you are a healer or a therapist or a coach or you want to be helping others or you are already in that path you can have this tool of constellations because sometimes we attend this field because I used to do that. I, I practice uh, pranic healing, energy healing. I used to teach a lot of things, qigong. Meditas, meditation, qigong, tai chi, um, yoga, tons mm -hmm. of things. But when I got to constellations, I was like, oh, I got to the core of it. You know, it was the soul what we needed to see. And that's actually the shortest way. Because the other ways can get you aligned here and there, but this one creates a change that you only can understand when you experience it. It gives you order, like you said, the order of love. It gives you order, you and then you feel that order. Mm -hmm. You feel it, you get aligned to it. And when your soul gets aligned to that change, then your mind understands it. And because the feeling happens in the energetic level. And you change a direction of 
where you were going to, which was dysfunctional maybe, to a new or reality. A new reality, <laughs> yeah, a new Transformation. Transformation. Happens Evolution. There. Yes, you All know, those power words. I, you know, we, oh, I forgot to mention that. You, um, Janet was with me in a constellation the other day at yes. night. Mm -hmm. And we did a consideration for this woman and she shared the next day. She had an issue with her mother. We're, gonna, we're not going to tell what it was, but she had this sort of struggling, right, energetically with her mom. And she did the constellation. She did this transformation because transformation happens in the moment in constellations. And then she shared that the, the following day they were both having breakfast and laughing and they were like talking and remembering and that they had such a great time out of the blues as we said but the mother didn't know about it but she constellated that and she created that reality for them and that's the beauty and the magic of family constellations oh thank you to join awesome <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Well, we will see you then next Monday next at Monday. 7 p.m. We will be here with another topic, topic of journey to consciousness. Absolutely. <laughs> and we will see you on Saturday for the webinar. Yes. Okay. We have the links below. <laughs> and please invite invite friends, invite people, anyone that you can think of that can truly benefit from this information yes. and tools, definitely invite them because we are here. Our journey is to heal the world and we start one step at a time. Well, two, one tool at a time. One tool at a time. One, one event, step at a time. One, so please um, um, invite people. Absolutely. Please. And please share this video if you feel that it can serve others and we will appreciate that because that's what we want to do to expand this information that it can go all over the world <laughs> or for whoever is ready to listen to it and to do something with it and start their role to evolution yes <laughs> that's the best gift we can each give ourselves yeah because as we give it to the self we bring it to the world that's how powerful it is i yes. heal myself i heal the world I heal I don't need to be running after others or anything else, but heal yourself and then you will help heal the, the world. whole world. Yes. All right. Thank so, you, everyone. Thank, thank you for you. joining us. Absolutely. Thank you all for being here. We'll see you Monday. Have a, a great weekend. I hope I get to see you on Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Please sign up if you haven't done so. <laughs> Take care, everyone. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Blessings. Bye-bye. <laughs>